is uh, good to go from fifth on the grid and sixth will be Ugo de Wilde. Let's have a quick stroll up the grid if we can. David Vidal is on pole position in the predominantly white car. The yellow livery alongside is that of uh, number one, Kaya Collet. Then you've got Victor Martins, number 92 for ART Grand Prix and William Alatalo's finish colours, the blue and white, uh, alongside the rookie for JD Motorsport. Running up fifth on the grid, there it is, the black car from Arden's Alex Quinn. And in traditional Arden orange or red and white colours, sixth on the grid, Udo Ugo de Wilde, who was a race winner at Monza last year, but then the season rather fell away after that. Seventh on the grid in the white car from ART Grand Prix is uh, Paul Aron. And for eighth on the grid, again for Arden, is uh, Recha du Jarras, the French driver. Ninth on the grid, Grégoire Soussi, there he is, again for ART Grand Prix. And to round out the top 10 on the grid, uh, you get the MP Motorsport orange car of uh, Monza winner Franco Colapinto. Next up for Bytec is Lorenzo Colombo, who was a winner last year. So you'd anticipate actually should be a bit higher up the grid. Then for our ace GP, it is Petra Patacek, the Czech driver. Michael Beloff comes next. Now, Beloff was rapid uh, in the races at Monza, but quite a long way back on the grid here in the red, white and blue of SMP Racing. 14th on the grid for FA Racing Amory Cordiel, who had a tiny off in qualifying this morning. For FA Racing, Fernando Alonso's squad is uh, Tymon van der Helm, and alongside for MP Motorsport in the yellow and black Renault colours there is Hadrian Vavid. On the ninth row of the grid, you've got Nicola Marinangeli for Bitec. And alongside is teammate Laszlo Toff, the Hungarian driver, who we saw for Hungary in the motorsport games at the back end of last year. Now then, on the back row, two to watch here, Jonathan Hoggard, who was the uh, Aston Martin BRDC Autosport Young Driver of the Year Award winner last year. Jonathan Hoggard and alongside him, Joey Alders. Now, Joey Alders had a mechanical problem. It was either engine or gearbox related in qualifying this morning. He's one to watch. Jonathan Hoggard has put this deal together very, very last minute because he had signed up to go and do Carrera Cup Asia. Completely different discipline, of course, in a completely different region. But with the situation out there being that dates are very up in the air, he needed a program to go racing. Well, back to single-seaters. He dominated the BRDC's uh, eSports Championship with iZone in the lockdown months. And Jonathan Hoggard won that with a round to spare. Here in real world, single seater racing again. Slightly on the back foot, because he hasn't had very much testing. But I'm sure as the weekend goes on, he will get stronger and stronger and stronger. And uh, we'll wait and see how much of this season he does, whether he stays in Europe and uh, defers that Carrera Cup Asia drive for another year. Well, we'll find out. This is the formation lap in anticipation of what is going to be race three of the year. It is 30 minutes plus the regulation lap. The cars turning their way here through Tamborello, they're down towards Villeneuve. And David Vidalis is the man on pole position, the Spanish driver with Kyle Collett lining up alongside. The Brazilian driver who came from the Formula 4 UAE Championship, uh, drove in French Formula 4, was the champion back in 2018. Fifth was Kyle Collett in Formula Renault Euro Cup last season. And uh, now switching to uh, the second season as the favourite very definitely here uh, as the man to watch so the uh, drivers here making their way around the formation lap and can Kyle Collett take a second win of the year can we get three different winners out of the first three races uh, for third on the grid it is Victor Martins who last year was part of the uh, Renault Sport Academy no longer, but the former French gymnastics champion, Victor Martins, went to karting a few years back, uh, moved to French Formula 4 championship runner-up, drove in the NEC Formula Renault championship, the now defunct series. Uh, in 2019, he was fifth in Euro Cup and uh, has been, sorry, he was second in Euro Cup last year, I should say he was fifth in 2018 and uh, also drove in the Asian Winter Series. So. Uh, for Victor Martins, he's another driver with uh, a good pedigree. Will be a driver to uh, keep an eye to over the course of this race as the cars now funnel into place. Fourth on the grid is uh, William Alatalo, who, as I was saying a little while ago, has looked really good in the test sessions that have been held.
form this weekend. He was ninth in Italian Formula 4 last year, did a couple of outings in the German Championship. He also drove and finished third in the feature race in the motorsport games, the single-seater element of that. Drove in the UAE Formula 4 Championship. He's raced in the Nordic single-seater series as well. So William Alatello is a quick driver. He's got lots of single-seater experience and hoping to put that to very good use over the next 33 minutes as we are set to go racing. It is the third round of the championship then to at Monza. Two to come here at Imola. The last couple of cars will slot into place. The yellow and black livery of uh, Hadrian Vaviv comes into position at the back of the grid. The very last driver is Joey Alders for MP Motorsport. He has got some ground to make up here, that's for sure, but he can probably do it. So let's go racing then. The Formula Renault Euro Cup season, already two races old, but are we going to have a third different winner? The grid is complete. The race director now turns his attention to the lighting gantry. Five red lights will go on when the lights go out. Now we're in business and a good start is made by Vidalis from pole position there, but somebody bogs down. It looks possibly like who'd go to Wilder's car there, or possibly Colapinto behind him, but if they get away now then, who was it that got left on the line? It was Rasha Tajeras, yes, so it was one of the Arden cars as Vidalis leads the way. Colet goes second, and they wriggle their way here through the Tamburello chicane for the first time. David Vidalis then from pole position, making good his escape. Kyle Collett coming under attack. Look as they dive down towards us then. William Alatalo is on the attack as well. Victor Martins has lost a place. Whoops, you've got one in the gravel already. Way, way, way off the road. And that, I fear, may well have been Paul Aaron's car that got elbowed out wide. He's back on circuit. We'll double check at the end of the lap and they break the timing beam. But David Vidalis leads the way. Kyle Collett second. William Alatalo is third. Look as they climb the hill for the first time here. A good getaway then as the cars sprint their way for the first time now through the Pelotella. Downhill heading towards the Aqua Minerale and Vidalis on cold tyres has done a demon job on this first lap because he's already extending the advantage over the rest. There's going to be contact possibly there. Look, just avoided. 21, the recovering Russian Dejeras squabbling with the Bitec car of Lashlo Toth. Through the Valley Ante Alta they come. Riding the curve, so Vidalis it is who needs the pack. Collett second, Alatalo is third, Martins fourth, Quinn is fifth. It was not Aaron then that ran off the road. He is shown as being in sixth place, but we'll confirm at the end of the lap which of the ART cars it was, ART Grand Prix. Another of the top junior teams on the grid in this championship. So as the field comes through there, look going by is Timon van der Helm in the Seoul FA racing car, always distinctive for the multicolored livery, but the Spanish driver David Vidalis leads at the end of that one. Kyle Collett goes through in second place. Third at the end of the opening lap is William Alatalo. And can Collett do anything about the leader, or is he going to have to now think about the defence here? Well, there is Collett in second spot. Third Alatalo. Fourth is Martins. And Gregoire Soussi was the driver that went off the road. You can see he's dropped 11 places. Seven places lost by Dejeras for his pop start. And up one spot, Alatalo, and up one spot, Victor Martins as well, as they come now out of the Tamburello. Now, number 92 there, Victor Martins, on the back of Alatalo as they come up the hill out of Tosa. Is there going to be an opportunity now to try to make a move? Let's see. He's in the toe, but is the straight long enough to benefit from that? Not really, because just as you crest, you're having to turn downhill here through the Pelotella plunge downhill indeed what you can do at this next section may be is force a mistake out of the driver ahead of you into aqua minerale they come it's right and right again downhill and uphill and then over the brow it's a circuit the drivers love because there's so much of a challenge in it 51 going through there is lashlo toff 17th he was at the start of the lap as the cars now flick through the chicane over the curve bounce bounce through back on the power look now martins He's got more experience of these cars, remember? He raced them last year. Van does William Alatello ahead of him. And as they drop down the hill towards Rivazza now, the double apex left. Is he near enough to make a move? Yes, but there isn't really the width of the road there to enable him to do that. So Victor Martins sprints towards us. Is there going to be an opportunity now to have a go here as they come up towards the timing line? Victor Martins got a tenth and a second out of the races at Monza. But David Vidal is, is away and gone. Look, two laps in the book. He's obviously just done the fastest lap of the race, the first thing from a standing start. But Vidal has checked out. He's gone. Collet second. Alatalo is third. Martins is still there in fourth ahead of Quinn. Aaron Colapinto, De Wilde, Colombo and uh, Belov. Michael Belov up three places from his grid spot. So impressive stuff this from 
David Vidal is early on in the race as the cars now come through Tamborello once more. Second, third and fourth then in a battle pack. Turning their way up the hill. So there is number one. That is Kyle Collett. Carries that as the man leading the championship jointly with Franco Colapinto. Now, where in the order is Colapinto is the next question. He's down in seventh place, so that's advantage Collett as far as the championship is concerned. They're going through Luke Simon van der Helm in the FA racing car coming downhill now. But he's under attack, look, because right there on his tail, number 21, Rashad de Geras, after that ghastly start, which saw him squander all the places really that he gained through the qualifying lap, he's trying to make amends here. So Vidal is getting away. He was a second and a half to the good last time. Interestingly, on this lap, Gregoire Sosi, catching up to the field, has done the absolute best uh, in the first sector because, of course, he's running in clear real estate, clear air. Downhill they turn. Second, third, and fourth as a battle. Fifth, sixth, seventh as a battle. Quinn, Aaron, and then Colapinto. Colapinto yet to really make progress, but this could be the debut of debuts for David Vidal's first car race, first time in Formula Renault Euro Cup. Pole, and he's leading, and there he is, and he's almost out of range now of Collett because he is still having to think about defending from William Alatalo. So David Vidalis is away and gone. With the Tamborello. Now look there at the battle that's going on between Paul Aaron and then behind him, uh, Franco Colapinto. Colapinto won the first race at Monza, which inevitably had its safety car interventions because Monza and Formula Renault normally does, but uh, Colapinto came through as the victor there. Looking quite strong here as well. If he could just get himself onto the back, he might be able to think about a move for position. The cars climb the hill. Colapinto, the reigning Spanish Formula 4 champion, did have a couple of outings in Euro Cup last year, but it was really the Spanish F4 championship that was the uh, focus of attention and also did uh, a couple of races within the Euro Formula Open. But uh, Franco Colapinto then Accelerate downhill. The Argentine driver comes from Buenos Aires. Whoops, somebody's had a moment there. Look, and Lashlo Toff is on the recovery. Joey Alders, number 12, working his way up the order. But it's a slow process, this. Joey Alders up to the back of the grid, not being able to carve his way through the traffic, I'm afraid to say. He's gained one spot there at the expense of Toff, that's for sure. Gregoire Sosi comes up to have a go next. And then Jonathan Hoggard struggling with a lack of track time here, really yet nailed his hat on with Formula Renault. It's a shame that because Jonathan is a very, very good single-seater racer. So up towards the timing line comes David Vidalis. Through they go with Vidalis ahead of Collet and the margin is about to be evinced. It's nearly two seconds. 1.8 it is over the Brazilian in third place, William Alatalo. For Victor Martins, is he still in that battle? Let's see. He's certainly not all over the back now. No, he's dropped away by three or four lengths from the blue car of Alitalo here, so he's falling away ever so slightly. In fifth spot still, it's Alex Quinn, the British driver. In sixth place is Paul Aaron, the Estonian. So as the cars turn through once again, if anything is going to change, it's going to be that second place fight, isn't it? Number one, which is the uh, car of Kyle Collett then, with William Alitalo right up behind. Alitalo, is he going to be the next of the flying Finns? Of course, it was from Formula Renault Euro Cup, but Kimi Raikkonen went straight to Formula 1. He won this title, he went straight to Sauber, and many people said, no, you can't do that, not experienced enough, but he absolutely shone, didn't he? William Alitalo, ninth in Italian F4 last year, so again, he's one of the few people with uh, a bit of track knowledge. He was very, very good in the test sessions early on in the week, perhaps understandably, given that he would have raced here in F4. So William Alitalo, another driver that we saw in the FIA Motorsport Games, now flips through the chicane here. see how aggressive the drivers are over those curves and now the run downhill once again heading towards Rivazza but up front David Vidal is getting away from the opposition Jonathan Hoggard at the back of the pack the target for him Gregoire Sossi and Joey Alders up to 17th then from 20th on the grid more cars here than we had at Monza as you heard Antoine Gold saying on the grid to tie Tariq outside up past the pits comes then David Vidalis the gap is up again 1.9 seconds so they all turn who else if anybody is making progress the Jeras has dropped back as you see 
from that grid position. And Gregoire Sosi likewise, of course, after running off the road and struggling to be able to gain the time back. So you gain off the start, you gain through the hurly burly of the first lap of the race, but then it's starting to plateau a little bit, which is perhaps why Vidal's pace is so impressive because he's just away. On cold tyres, he was able to build that lead nice and early here. And it's certainly working in his favour as the cars accelerate uphill now, making their way on towards the Peratella. Here they turn. So as they uh, accelerate down towards Aqua Minerale, on this lap, you would suggest that Alitalo has fallen away, rather, uh, from Kyle Collett. Now, is that going to give hope to Victor Martins behind him? Certainly, the gap has widened second to third, but not yet. Is Alitalo falling into the clutches of Martins? And Martins sectors and laps not yet suggesting he's going to be able to do much about it whereas Alex Quinn has done an absolute best within the first sector on this lap. Kyle Collett intriguingly as well is a tenth quicker than Vidal is in sector two and that's the best of anybody in the middle sector thus far so that's another gap that is coming down and with still two-thirds of the race remaining half an hour plus a lap it's a long long race Maybe if you ask too much of your tyres early on, that's going to bite you at the end, and that perhaps is what Collett now is relying on. They're going through is 17, which is the car of Hadrian David. So the uh, French driver chipping his way up the order. Part of the Renault Sport Academy, having been the French Formula 4 champion last year. So moving up to Euro Cup. The rookie title is the main focus, but you never know. He might uh, be able to spring a surprise for overall podiums as the season progresses. In the two Monza races, he got a seventh and a sixth, so pretty good results straight out of the box. This man, though, in his first outing in the championship, David Vidalis, climbs the hill. The gap 1.9 seconds over Kyle Collett. William Alatello. Still running there in that third place. Martins is fourth, Quinn fifth, Aaron sixth, Colapinto seventh, De Wilde eighth. There should be more out of Hugo De Wilde, as there should be for Lorenzo Colombo in ninth place. They were winners both last year. Petro Patacek is in tenth place. And now the race getting into a pattern, so you're starting to see the problems of being unable to overtake. But I wonder whether Alitalo is maybe not a little bit nearer this time to Collett. In the first sector, yes, he is quicker. In the second sector, he's lost out ever so slightly. So it's another of those uh, rather elasticated situations between the two. Under the rebellion gantry, they come down towards Rivazza, number 20 that you're looking at there is the British driver Alex Quinn for Arden in very un Arden like colours. Uh, remember he was very impressive when he came into Euro Cup at the back end of last year at the Nürburgring. Up towards the timing line there goes number 11 Franco Colapinto, joint championship leader coming into this race but he's about to wave goodbye to that because he's being well and truly outscored here by Kyle Pollock. So the leaders go through starting now lap seven. David Vidal is clear by 1.9 seconds over Collett and then Alitalo battle on further down the order here 27 is Ugo de Wilder so the Arden car under attack from the Vitec entry of Lorenzo Colombo and you see the Vitec car with its uh, Mont Blanc sponsorship They've been a timing partner at Goodwood for many, many years, but now adorning the Vitec cars in Formula Renault Euro Cup. And up the hill climbs Lorenzo Colombo, keeping Patacek at bay. So approaching half distance, 17 minutes plus the regulation lap at the end. David Vidal is still the race leader. And Alex Quinn just doing the absolute best of anybody within the first sector here, getting away from the opposition. So he's shaking off Paul Aaron. Does that mean also he might be able to get onto terms with Victor Martins before the very end? Let's see. So downhill once more comes 91. Paul Aaron. As I said early on, we've seen his elder brother, Ralph Aaron, winning in Formula 4 and in the FIA Formula 3. European Championship. Now Paul Aaron, the next in the line of Estonians to come and tackle international single-seater racing. Alex Quinn goes through, single-seater racer, occasional GT4 racer in the UK. 
and uh, they're coming now through the Tamburello sequence of corners. Number 20, Alex Quinn, as I say, on that previous lap, absolute best in sector one and a personal best, in fact, in sector three. So Quinn is closing a little onto the back of Victor Martins. He's got to make up another second or so, and he's doing, going the right way about it. Through Tosa they come. See the order further back, which now has Nicola Marinangeli dropping to the very foot of the order. So I think Marinangeli has had a moment somewhere, falling behind Cersei and Hoggard. And now the gaps are starting to widen, aren't they? There goes Van der Helm. Now, is this the answer to what happened to Marinangeli? Yes, it is. Makes a complete Horlix of Sambarello through the gravel, brings all of the muck and bullets back onto the road. Does that set of Hancock's not a huge amount of good and falls to the rear of the order as a consequence. Gregoire Sosi getting ahead of Lashlow Toff now as well. Up into 17th place. Joey Alders 16th from the back of the grid. Last time Formula Renault was here as the Euro Cup, incidentally, one of the two winners was Scott Speed. I was thinking of another Formula One link. William Anatello then goes through number 38 and in third place, still chasing after Collett. He's there, he's on the tail of it. But can he find a way by? Points only for the top 10 as well, so the pressure is on for the likes of Michael Belov to get onto terms with Tatchek and get that final point. Now, that gap second to third has very definitely come down, hasn't it? So you've got now William Alitalo right there on the tail. Number one, Kyle Collett. Of course, while he goes defensive, it all plays into the hands of David Vidalis. He's getting away up the road up front. Through Peratello they come. If they do get together and hold themselves up, then Victor Martins will come back into the equation. And out of absolutely nowhere, Hugo de Wilder has just suddenly done the absolute best in sector one. So the Belgian with the Italian mum, Hugo de Wilder, suddenly digs deep out of nowhere as i say finds this ultimate sector time but look at this battle pack now developing for second third and fourth they're getting closer and closer call it being caught by anatello who is stuck so that enables victor martins to close up as well over the brow they turn down now into Rivazza. so william anatello right there on the tail of Kyle Collett, and he knows, he knows he's got to do this before Martins arrives right on his tail, because if that happens, then he's going to have to go defensive, and he'll have to end up dropping away from Collett in order to keep Martins at bay. So if he can catch, he needs to strike, and strike fast. Through goes Vidalis, the gap is two and a half seconds now. He is away and gone. Unless he makes a mistake, this is his race, it's his to lose, isn't it now? So Victor Martins in fourth place, up now with William Alitalo. And Alitalo just, just, just starting to fall away ever so slightly from Kyle Collett in that second place. Uh, Martins has now done the absolute best in the first sector. So now he's got a sniff of that third place. Look, he's right on the tail of Alitalo. They turn, they climb the hill out of Tosa now. Make the run uphill. So Collett aiming to pull away. Alitalo trying to attack, trying to defend. Alex Quinn is there in fifth place. Now, he's in no man's land as well, in a sense. He's not being attacked by anybody, but he's not attacking. If these three continue to delay themselves, he's got a chance of catching up, one would have thought. It's there, out of the Aquamerali they come. Martins using all of the curb. Makes the climb up the hill now. minutes and change on the clock and then at the end of that you get the regulation lap down the hill they go so number 92 you're looking at Victor Martins running in that fourth place so JD Motorsport first and third so Vidalis and Alitalo Kaya Collett sandwiched between them 11 minutes still on the clock is over the timing line there goes the race leader so that now puts 10 laps in the book, start lap 11. 
and the gap is 2.3 seconds between the top two. Pit boards go out. Mechanics with masks, of course. Number 44 going over the timing line is the M2 competition car of Michael Belov. And this is the second, third and fourth fight about to burst into the last third of the race here. Victor Martins throwing everything at it. But he needs to because, remember, it's the second year in the category and therefore with all of that experience, that third year in the category, to be fair to him, all the experience ought to have him up at the pointy end of the grid, but it's not really happening in the way that he would like. He's quick, he's there, he's competitive, but he's not really being able to make more progress from fourth place. And, of course, he was better than that in qualifying. So through turns... Pollock out of the Aqua Minerale once again. Alatello is there in third place. Martins fourth. But what is this lead gap? 2.3 seconds. David Vidal is massively impressive. There's no other way of looking at it. First car race, first time in Euro Cup, of course. Takes pole. He's been impressive in testing as well. He didn't luck into pole position. Whoops, big, big slide there from 91. That's a rather curb happy Paul Aaron as he comes through the Variante Alta. Downhill once more comes Kyle Collett with Alatalo back on his tail. So, in the case of Martins, you close, you get into the dirty air, you go slower, you drop back. That takes the pressure off the man ahead. He then catches the car ahead and gets equally stuck. Alatalo over the timing line, he will come chasing after Kyle Collett. Gaps are there, look, and David Vidalis goes through, and the lead gap is down by a couple of tenths, interestingly. Now, is this Vidalis driving within himself? Is he getting to a point where the rubber is going off? Or is Collett being spurred on by still having to push to try and keep Alitalo at bay? Through goes Victor Martins in that fourth place. What about Alex Quinn's progress? He's doing personal best in sectors, but not necessarily uh, being able to close markedly on those ahead. Whoops, we've got a car off and it's Petra Patacek. And that, I think, is coming through Tamborello. He's a long way off. It is Tamborello. Now, how did he get there is the question. Was he pushed or did he fall? The safety car boards are being prepared. So the race director has called for the safety car. So the safety car hits the track. And that is bad news for Vidalis because it's going to bunch up everybody behind him. Now, of course, one of the reasons in all of this partly is getting a car out of a dangerous place, but also, of course, there are fewer marshals allowed on site and fewer marshals allowed to go to a car and the driver uh, can't vacate and, and all of these extra elements to factor in with social distancing. So we are, for the next few months, in all sorts of races, going to have these extra caution periods just to be on the safe side and just so that these situations can be dealt with uh, under the so-called new normal. This might answer the question as to how Tatchek got there. Well, we see the end of it. It all looked rather self-induced. So Patachuk off the road. And the uh, check driver out of the race. So safety car on track with seven and three quarter minutes on the clock. Shouldn't take long to get Patachuk's car out of the gravel bed. And of course, this is one of the beauties of a timed race. It's going to be 30 minutes plus a lap, no matter at what pace you go. So uh, through go the leaders, but that leading gap has come right down. It was over 2.3 seconds. It had just dipped to 2.1. And now it's going to be length, isn't it, rather than full seconds. So there is David Vidalis. This gives his tyres a breather. And, of course, he's going to be on the restart, the man who can control the pace. He will decide when to go, when to push, when to try and get that advantage over the opposition. There's the safety car turning through. So the car's currently working at lap 15. And as they do so, sorry, lap 14, I should say, they're on lap 14. As they do so, they come up the hill to Pelotella. Race order, as you see, Vidal is from Collet, Alitalo from Martins Quinn is fifth, ahead of Aaron and Colapinto. 
De Wilder, Colombo and Belov round out those in the points at the moment. Safety car turns downhill. The Aqua Minerale with the curbs on the inside, curbs on the outside. Run off tarmac as well, should it be needed. How many laps are we going to likely have the safety car out for would be a question. Just looking to see if the marshals are able to get this car out of harm's way swiftly. The lights are still flashing on the safety car, of course. When the lights go out, that's the indication that it will peel in at the end of that lap. But right now, safety car stays out. Jonathan Hoggard bumped back down to 19th after his gravelly moment. Nicola Malinangeli got back ahead of him. So now the pace looks like it's being upped a little bit as they come towards the timing line. The yellow flags are still there, but you see all the weaving to keep the tyre temperatures up and the pressures up as well, ready for the restart. Now we are into the 2 minute 43 bracket for laps. So that's looking like, if they stay out, two safety car laps and the regulation lap. Cars turning through. All of these 1800cc turbocharged Renault engine cars. And David Vidal is the race leader in what has been thus far an amazing debut. Is it going to remain that way? Is the safety cars in this lap? Or is the fairy tale going to come to an end because of the safety car bringing Kyle Collett back into the mix? Well, you've got to say that from a standing start, Vidalis was absolutely extreme in the way that he got away. Can he do the same from a rolling start? Joey Alders might be able to roll the dice again as well here. He did some of his overtaking early doors up from the back of the grid. He had this mechanical drama in qualifying that prevented him really from doing a flying lap. But Joey Alders is a, a, a quick young Dutch driver, retired in the first race, but got 10th uh, in race two at Monza. So he's another one to keep an eye to on this resumption of the race to see what progress can be made. An incident involving Petra Patacek and car 22, which, sorry, I don't mean 22, that's what the message line said, but it will be a different message car. Yes, 22 is what the timing screen tells me, but we don't have a 22, so it's Petra, Petra Patacek and AN Other will be investigated after the race. Hard to investigate somebody that doesn't exist in the race, I guess, in the context of the number 22 car that's been typed onto the screen. However, the stewards will have a look at something and uh, decide if anything needs to be done. So downhill they come. We'll go racing this time. And David Vidal is, is away. He's already gained a couple of lengths. Speed builds. The yellows will be replaced by the green flags. And with two minutes and change on the clock, we go racing. So there should be time, I would have thought, just for two flying laps and the regulation lap to go. Vidal is leads past the pit then. Second and third, nose to tail. William Alatello on the back of Caio Collet. Place change about to go further back by the look of it as they come into Tamburello with Dejeris making progress. Joey Alders also on his toes as the leaders go by. So down they come towards Villeneuve and the race leader David Vidal is once more getting away Kaya Collett is there in second spot third still is Alatello and Martins not going with them because he's a bit busy defending from Alex Quinn who is fifth and then Paul Aaron who is in sixth place but Martins does actually close right up going into toes are under braking we've got a car running wide as you saw there coming out of Villeneuve and flashing through the gravel so there'll be a bit more shuffling in a moment. Look, there's a right old concertina effect going on at the foot of the hill at Tosa. Up the hill, come the leaders, over the brow, through Pelotella, drop downhill once again. The one retirement is Patacek. Vidalis is building the advantage once more. He's away and gone. 
Joey Alders up to 14th at the expense of Tejeras now. Over the brow they come. So Vidal is. Is the clock going to hit zero on this lap? I think they'll just be able to get to the timing line in time for one more. So Vidal is already heading down towards Rivazzi yet. He'll be good. Kyle Collett's there in second place. William Alatello is third ahead of Martins, Quinn and Aaron. There's no change in the order really up front, despite the safety car bunching them all up, despite giving people another proverbial bite of the cherry. To the timing line comes Vidalis with two to run. The clock will hit zero this time. He'll get the regulation lap tagged on at the end of it. And over the timing line now, he will come then. So Debbie Vidalis leads the pack. Is that a slightly wayward line? Coming out of Tamburello, drama in the background, one in the gravel. And that is out of the bottom end of the top 10. And that is number 91 that has gone off the road. That is Paul Aaron. And that, as the clock hits zero, is in just as bad a place, I would have thought, if not worse than Patacek. So that should be another interruption. We've got the regulation lap at the end of this, but I'm not entirely sure as the yellows and the safety car comes out that it's going to be worth running because they can't overtake, but the safety car will be deployed. That's the reason. There's no way that you can really let them go past that under modern-day green flag conditions. So the race is going to end effectively behind the safety car here. They'll start the last lap of the race. The safety car will pick them up, but they won't be able to do anything. Uh, there might be a symbolic run to the line, so the photographs will have the chequered flag being waved rather than a safety car in front. There is the incident. Hard to see whether there was a shove, but I think there might have been. Uh, Colapinto getting in there so there was a bit of a push from behind so out comes the safety car and as i say that's effectively the end of the race because there'll be no real opportunity to overtake uh, from here on in which is a big big shame but uh, it is i'm afraid to say one of those things and with the car as you saw right on the lip of the circuit there wasn't a great deal that the race director could do even with only a lap to go it's still not worth the risk of anybody else running wide and clobbering it Far better, but the question is why did you put the safety car out rather than why didn't you? So the uh, cars come through, two safety car periods then. We're doing all right to begin with. Uh, and then, as ever, safety cars breed safety cars. Over the timing line comes David Vidales. He's about to start the last lap of the race. This will bring him into the mix of the championship quite nicely with uh, 20 points, sorry, 25 points straight away to his name. So over the line they come and the clock hits zero so as i say this will be now the uh, final lap of the race so david vidal is what a debut within the championship kaya collett will assume the championship lead with a win a third and a second over the uh, course of the three races thus far and william alitalo also taking his best thus far first podium of the season so quite a lot for different people to be pleased about but none more so than uh, David Vidalis. The cars now turn their way down through Tamburello. So there he is, the race winner. you all only got to take the chequered flag, but this is like an early lap of honour for him. So up through Tosa, David Vidalis with uh, a very impressive Formula Renault Euro Cup debut. Race two has a standalone qualifying session that will begin uh, tomorrow's action at Imola. And for David Vidalis, let's see whether it can be two out of two. But uh, he was mighty in testing. He was mighty in qualifying this morning and looking oh so strong around here, putting himself very much in a good position for the remainder of the weekend. Having said that, go back 12 months, a little bit more. Um, Hugo de Wilde dominated the first race at Monza, never came close again to looking as good. He was in the front running pack, never got another win. So. It uh, doesn't always follow that you look impressive in one race and you will continue in that way. So the last few corners of the lap being ticked off here. Drivers making their way through the Valiant, the Alta, the lights are out on top of the safety car, but all you can then do is make the run up towards the timing line. So the flag will be out, the clock has hit zero. We've had the regulation lap.
Safety car will peel in this time. So David Vidalis gets ready to accelerate away just to make sure that he doesn't get mugged on the line. The safety car will peel in. And so David Vidalis accelerates away the Formula Renault Euro Cup race one at Imola. There's the chequered flag. Vidalis takes the win. Kyle Collett will be second and William Alatello third, but only just. Victor Martins then with Alex Quinn behind him comes across the line next to Franco Colapinto in sixth place, subject to anything that the race officials may want to have a look at at the end. So a great drive, really, really impressive that by David Vidalis comes through a dominant winner, really. The gap at the end doesn't tell you the whole story, does it? Because what we had was a very, very good margin of over 2.3 seconds early on, much reduced because of those two late race safety car periods. So as the drivers complete the in-lap, Jonathan Hoggard down in 19th spot and in fact retiring to the pit lane in the end uh, Paul Aaron we lost in the gravel so a disappointing race that for Jonathan I know he's way behind the eight ball in terms of mileage from the lack of testing but uh, clearly there's something not quite right there preventing the progress to be made one of the other lovely features of that Emily you see all the buildings around the circuit on the inside and the outside of it and uh, just like Monza, it has that fa fabulous old school circuit feel. The drivers having had uh, lots of laps around here, really enjoying the challenge of the circuit as well. So we'll check the results in a moment and the drivers will, of course, have a slightly subdued celebration. Uh, some of the scenery around Imola, as we confirm David Vidal is the winner with 18 laps done from Kyle Collett, William Alatalo in third place, Victor Martins fourth ahead of Alex Quinn and Franco Colapinto, Lorenzo Colombo taking seventh from Hugo de Wilder, Adrian David and Michael Belov, the point scorers. Amory Cordiel 11th from Timon van der Helm and Joey Alders up to 13th from 20th on the grid, missing the points but making progress. Gregoire Sussi 14th and Rashad de Geras throwing away a lot of hard work with a very poor start. 16th Lashlo Toff, Nicola Malinangeli, 17th after a trip through the gravel, retiring into the gravel, Paul Aaron, a retirement in the pit lane, Jonathan Hoggard, another retirement in the gravel was Petra Patacek. So, David Vidal is the race winner. Into the Parc Ferme area he comes. And again, for social distancing, barriers are there to clearly demark where you can park and therefore making sure you don't get the cars too close to one another and the drivers too close to one another. But it is uh, quite a debut, that. As he clambers. Applause from the team. And David Vidalis walks over. That's about as uh, excited as you can get. Masks on, I think that's just about allowed, isn't it? Under social distancing, crash helmets and masks, that's pretty much okay. Lots of elbow bumping, which is the new way of saying hello or congratulations. But uh, William Alatalo taking third place there. So our 1-3 for JD Motorsport, which is a good start to the season. I know they've had the two races at uh, Monza, but uh, good results here as well. There is Kyle Collett, a little bit frustrated, one would suspect, having tried hard, but never really being able to get near enough to Vidal is just seemingly lacking that final something, that final nth of pace. So the drivers go to the scrutineering garage where they are weighed. Their weight and that of the car factored together to make sure that everything is as the regulations dictate. And uh, the Officials and the mechanics getting the cars ready for the uh, scrutineering check. There's the Renault Sport backdrop. 
in the pit lane. The Park Fairway area now being cleared, ready for the next activity because the pit lane is going to be used for the next race here because it's a, a pit stop GT4 race. And let's have a look at some of the highlights of that race and also the uh, end of it where we have the cars all bunched up under the safety car. That was set to accelerate away. And uh, this, a moment to savour for David Vidalis then. He controlled the race pace all the way through as he stormed away. Checkered flag at the ready, a race win. First race in Euro Cup, pole and a race win. How about that? So the drivers will make to the presentation area, but we will have a look at the highlights, which began with that dreadful start for uh, Russia Dejeris. A good start made, though, by David Vidalis, and it was a start he was never to lose as the cars accelerated their way through the opening couple of corners off the road and dropping a long, long way down the order. Uh, from number 93 was Gregoire Sosi. He got back into the race, did recover some of the lost ground, but 14 in the end. Another to run out of road was the Italian driver Nicola Marinangeli, but he was able to recover from that. It was Petra Patacek's off that brought out the first safety car period. And perhaps inevitably it wasn't the last either. The race got back underway. David Vidal is set up trying to rebuild that gap over everybody else. Way wide coming through Villeneuve, losing more places. Rashad Dejeris and then off the road and he stayed off the road this time. Paul Aaron and that car embedded in the gravel brought out the second safety car. The race got back underway only for the ceremonial run to the flag with David Vidales coming out on top. And he was understandably a very happy man indeed. Now, it is David Vidal is the race winner, and Antoine Grohl is there to have a word with him. Yeah. David? Hey. Hello, David. Hello. David, fantastic job. It's your first race weekend in a Formula car. You took a brilliant pole this morning, and today it's a very, very strong win. What is your feeling today? I mean, I'm really happy. Uh, the team and everyone has done an incredible job. Since the beginning of the weekend, we were really fast, so work hard and with the ball position uh, the race we know it, it could be a bit more difficult the first start for me also ever in Formula car so yeah after the start uh, I managed to, to be first uh, until the end of the race so really happy yeah. thank you David congratulations Caio it was a very tough race we can see it on your hands uh, can you tell us a bit a bit more about your race and the pace that David was? Yeah, I think uh, both GDs had a really good pace today, uh, especially David. I think in the first two laps he could do a big gap and after it was really hard to catch. And yeah, but anyway, P2, good points for the championship, another podium. Uh, big thanks for the team, they did a really good job. Our first time here, so it's, it's not so bad and we will work for tomorrow. Thank you, Caio. Well done, William. Well done, William. Uh, P3 for you today. That's showing that all the weekend you had a good pace. Uh, what's your feeling now? Yeah, definitely I had a good pace all the weekend. Uh, just I wish I could have done a bit better jump of qualifying. I was P4 in that. And uh, But I had a great start of the race. I passed one driver, Victor Martins. After that, my goal was to just be the first. But uh, it didn't work out as I wanted. But I am happy with P3. Okay, thank you, William. Well thank done. You.